what's good family welcome back to the channel today as you can tell by the title y'all already know what we finna get into man hey but don't take this video as me hating on chris man because i mess with chris that's my boy like real bro he got me through some tough times so i'm just keeping it a hundred but hey you can't deny what the man has been through or the allegations that have been brought upon him so i mean Hey, let's get into it and see what this video talking about, man. And shout out to the person who created this video. It goes by the name of Deleted. So head over there and get that boy subscribed, man. But without further ado, let's get right into it. Oh, yeah. Make sure you like and subscribe if you haven't already, man. And turn on that notification bell. Let's get it. Nickelodeon, the network known for fun shows and bright colors. They were the ones being exposed on Quiet on the Set, the dark side of kids' television, which showed some pretty shocking truths about the network itself when it comes to the abuse of the underage actors. But now, they're focusing on keeping the same energy, but on someone else. The title documentary, Chris Brown, A History of Violence, discussions about Chris's actions and what they mean for his career and how people- Wait a minute, so they coming out with a documentary about about my boy this could get ugly for him they perceive him in the future he's had multiple violations of probation related to drug use and violent outbursts but it seems chris brown's violent behavior centers around particularly women and for whatever reason people turn a blind eye to after the announcement quite a few people took anger out in the comments the majority disapproves and feel that his altercation with rihanna is being dragged out far too long but that's the problem people thinks it's just rihanna when they're having multiple incidents and testimonies that there have been other victims chris wait is mo i thought it was just rihanna damn brown faced many accusations and legal troubles over the years however i think we should focus on just the women because it seems that's what the documentary will be about so i'ma just sum up the other legal issues for those who do not know what's going on and then we'll get to the crazy shit the Rihanna incident, which happened in 2009 when Chris was 20 years of age and Rihanna was 21, which led to injuries that required hospitalization. June 14, 2012, a violent fight broke out between Chris Brown and Drake at the WIP nightclub in New York City, fueled by tensions over their relationships with Rihanna, with Drake reportedly punching Chris and hitting him with a bottle, and involved their entourages nah, resulting in at least eight injuries. Chris bears the scar on his chin to this day from Drake's bottle throw. January 2013, Chris was involved in a notable incident with fellow artist Frank Ocean outside a recording studio in West Hollywood. The conflict began when Ocean accused Brown of taking his parking spot, and when Ocean confronted him, Brown punched him in the face. The situation escalated as two members of Brown's entourage reportedly joined in, jumping and punching and kicking Frank Ocean while calling him homophobic slurs. Damn, man, my boy Chris is an angry man, ain't he? He's an angry guy, bro. That's what it seems like now. I don't know for sure. But let's keep watching. 2016, Chris Brown encountered allegations of violence against a former client in a serious gun threat incident at his home. In May, Michael Garrigues, y'all already know, I be brutalizing the names. I, I brutalize them. It's all good. Known as Mike G, who had been hired by Brown to help improve his image, filed a lawsuit claiming that Chris viciously attacked him during a discussion about an upcoming tour, leaving Mike G hospitalized due to his injuries. Damn. May 2023, Chris Brown and Usher reportedly had an altercation during Chris Brown's 33rd birthday this. party at a roller rink in Las Vegas. The incident occurred after Brown became upset with Tiana Taylor, with Chris cussing her out, yeah. and Usher attempted to defuse the situation. Eyewitnesses claimed that after the confrontation, Usher was seen with a bloody nose, indicating a physical fight, though the details remain unclear despite the incident Damn. both artists performed later that day at the lovers and friends festival without any visible signs of injury and that leaves us with the most recent altercation that doesn't have anything to do with the women july 2024 chris brown faced a significant legal challenge when four men from denton county filed a 50 million dollar lawsuit against him and his entourage the plaintiffs claimed they were invited backstage and tensions escalated when a member of chris entourage reminded him of a past conflict with the guys, allegedly prompting Chris to respond aggressively and direct his entourage to attack the men. The lawsuit describes the assault as brutal and unprovoked. With damn, Chris, damn, Breezy, it's like that, bro. 
Like he running around here being a bully? Oh, I just don't want to believe that, man. Brown and several members of his entourage reportedly surrounding the plaintiffs, throwing chairs, kicking and stomping, resulting in at least one plaintiff requiring hospitalization. I do want to point out, Chris didn't always carry himself in this manner. It didn't start until after the Rihanna incident. When the world turned their back on Chris Brown after the Rihanna incident, he wasn't allowed on TV or radio at the time. A lot of people disassociated with him. Only friends who stood by his side publicly was his day one friends. His childhood friend was Miho. They have matching tats on their hands and all the shit. And Omarion, Tiana Taylor, and also Tyga. Chris would take to streaming. He did a Ustream series for a very long while, connecting to his fans, while hanging with his family and friends, giving his fans access to his life. And he would honestly be one of the first to actually do IRL streaming. I think I'm on you stream. Yeah, it's working. Cool, cool. Hey, hey. All right, we're in my crib at the moment. I did this this morning. I don't know if you guys see it. But I'm about to paint. I'm about to do some stuff. I don't have all my colors yet, though. Need some more blacks and whites. So let's start it off. All right. <laughs> I think Chris needed a form of belonging and he felt alone. So I think he adopted a Damn. new friend group. Shit got real dark, real quick. Damn, Chris, I didn't know you were going through stuff like that, bro. Damn. That explains all the hits. That accepted him for his flaws, what everyone else seemed to start to hate him for. Chris Brown's mother, Joyce Hawkins, has openly expressed concerns about the negative influence certain friends and potential gang affiliations may have on her son, urging him to surround himself with supportive friends rather than those who might lead him into further controversy. But with all that being said, Chris would grow into the gang lifestyle regardless of what his mother felt. Yeah, y'all like how I said regardless? I didn't say irregardless that time. Y'all can't y'all can't come from me in the comments. <laughs> I didn't say irregardless. I said regardless. All right, so now that you guys are all caught up and have a sense of all his legal troubles and issues, here's the cases he has when it comes to women who've came forward other than Rihanna. In February 2012, while still on probation for his assault on Rihanna, Chris Brown was accused of stealing a woman's phone outside of a nightclub in Miami Beach. The incident involved a woman named Crystal Spann, who claimed she took a photo of Brown as he was leaving the club. According to her, Brown reached through the window of his car, snatched the phone from her hands, allegedly saying, bitch, you ain't gonna put that photo on no website. As nah, he, he ain't say that. He ain't do that, man. It's all alleged. It's all alleged, y'all. This vehicle drove away. Brown's representatives denied the allegations. In August 2016, Brown was arrested after a woman named Bailey Coran accused him of threatening her with a gun at his home during a party. Coran oh, alleged man. that while admiring a diamond necklace, Chris became angry and pointed a firearm at her head. Following her claim, police engaged in a standoff with Brown before obtaining a search warrant. However, they found no firearms or jewelry as described by Koran. Chris was arrested on suspicion of assault with a deadly weapon, but was released on a $250,000 bail. His attorney, Mark Garagos, denied the allegations, stating they were fabricated and questioning Koran's credibility due to her own past legal issues. In January 2019, Chris Brown faced serious legal issues and he was detained in Paris after a woman accused him of aggravated rape at the Mandarin Oriental Damn. Hotel. The woman, a 24 year old alleged that brown assaulted her in like i said all this is alleged man. but damn it's too many it's too many at this point in used openly among the group she reported that brown followed her to the bathroom and assaulted her in a dressing room for about 25 to 30 minutes during which she felt threatened and afraid after the assault she claimed she was not allowed to leave immediately and was further assaulted by a member of Chris's entourage. Following these accusations, Chris and two associates were taken into custody for questioning, but were released shortly after without charges. Although French police indicated that the investigation would- Then he weighing friends with the crowd. Come on, bro. I just don't want to believe that this is Breezy doing this stuff, bro. Nah, bro. Damn. And you know, it's crazy because I didn't know that 
after Rihanna, it was most stuff going on. Like, I didn't even really know why him and Karuchi had broke up. I, I didn't even know that. But hopefully we'll get into it in this video, man. But this is wild. Continue, Chris denied the allegations on social media, calling them false and disrespectful to his character, and he expressed intentions to sue over the claims. While some fans and fellow artists voiced their support for Chris after his denial, many others criticized him, pointing to his history of violence against women as a serious concern. Now, this part right here, this is the craziest situation I think will probably raise a lot of your eyebrows. In 2020, Chris Brown faced serious legal challenges when a woman filed a lawsuit accusing him of drugging and raping her during a party on a yacht in Miami. The woman referred to as Jane Doe in the lawsuit claimed she was invited to a yacht owned by rapper Diddy in December 2020. Yes, the diddler himself. This was a Diddy party, you guys. This was a Diddy party situation. Diddy Damn. invited the young girl Damn, he to, went to a party, Diddy party on a yacht in December 2020. Upon her arrival, she alleged that Chris Brown mixed her drink, leading to a sudden, unexplained change in consciousness nah. that left her disoriented and unstable. She stated that Brown then took her to a bedroom where he undressed her and raped her despite her pleas for him to stop. The lawsuit nah. says the woman Man. who was still half asleep mumbled for brown to stop but he ignored her the lawsuit alleges that brown raped the woman and then jumped up and announced he was done he allegedly then told the woman to contact him so they could talk about her music career in the weeks following the alleged incident brown continued to reach out to the woman after the alleged assault chris reportedly contacted her suggesting she take a morning after pill the lawsuit claims that the incident caused her lasting emotional harm resulting in severe anxiety and panic attacks this situation was filed in january 2020 the lawsuit sought over $20 million in damages, with the plaintiff's attorney emphasizing that the case was not just about seeking justice for her, but also served as a warning for others who might find themselves in a similar situation with Chris Brown. However, in August 2022, a judge dismissed the lawsuit due to a lack of prosecution. Neither party appeared at a scheduled hearing. Now, I don't know if this is a case of Stockholm Syndrome or if the accuser was truly a flat out liar. Rolling Stone reported that the unidentified woman who sued Chris Brown with claims he drugged and raped her on Diddy's Miami Beach base yacht has lost her legal representation after police uncovered text messages that complicate her case. A Miami Beach police spokesman declined to comment on the department's probe calling it an active investigation. In her complaint, the woman alleges the R&B singer fed her a drug laid drink and assaulted her on the yacht that was docked at Diddy Star Island home on December 30th, 2020. But her text seemed to be consensual with Chris Brown. Mm. See, that's what I'm saying, bro. See, people using the fact that what he did to, or what happened between, I ain't gonna say what he did, but what happened between him and Rihanna as a way for them to get some money, bro. Like, it's some evil people out here, man. If you get rich, and you got some like dirt on yourself from the past people will use that because that's history they be like well he does have a violent history well he might have did do and it's crazy that people would do that it's wild man the compilation of the text communications obtained by rolling stone includes messages the women sent to chris brown the day after the alleged attack in which he allegedly calls brown babe and asked to see him again wait a minute what did it say i don't like talking on phones about stuff like that i'm just being proactive oh sh oh sh okay i'll get one i definitely didn't bust inside you niggas just was hella faded so i wanted to be sure she said okay babe that's fine i wanna f you tonight at midnight where you at la da da da, -da. it was probably because he didn't respond back and she got upset my females bro look in the night to have sex so I'm gonna place these text messages on screen. They're kind of they're they're way too explicit to reread for you guys. Well, let me move my camera around so y'all can uh do your thug fills, get your read on, and, and just pause it right here. I'm gonna just take my uh face off the screen and then I'm gonna put it back. Hope that's enough time for y'all because we're going back in. 
guys without getting demonetized so i'm gonna go ahead and put these screenshots on the screen and please read them press pause and all that i think it's safe to say chris is clear from that that situation could be a lie and fabricated and yep. her text messages go against what she originally reported and let me just be clear i only say kind of because of the whole stockholm syndrome i don't know much about it and i don't want to offend anybody that have been abused now i'm usually the guy that says oh i know somebody with stockholm syndrome and it's rough as I don't give a fuck about the way you feel because I truly don't but when it comes to somebody that is a victim and it's their story to tell I, I can't have an opinion on that I'm gonna be honest with you however from the looks of it from how I feel about it it just looks like she was lying just flat out lying unless it's Stockholm Syndrome because that is a real thing where people ignore the issues at hand because they're in love with the person or, or they're just attracted to the person and they give them excuses and they're okay with the things that they do to them and then they wake up from it is that what this is i don't know i will say that it is very eerie how her lawsuit and the whole ordeal is it, it mirrors cassie and all the other victims on these diddy yacht parties and parties in general it, it, it mirrors and this was a lawsuit two years ago am i saying i believe her uh, <laughs> I, and last but certainly not least the victim i feel who got the worst of chris brown was karushi trend her allegations against chris to achieve her restraining order sounds very familiar to cassie's case against diddy Karuchi Tran has made serious allegations against Brown regarding coercive behavior during their relationship, particularly around claims of forced threesomes. She claims that Chris pressured her into participating in these encounters. In response to these allegations, Chris reportedly commented that Tran knew what she signed up for. How many kids do you want though? Two, I'm cool with two. two. If I if a one is fine, <laughs> if it's a boy on the first try, bang. Oh, you should have yeah. trapped those two already. You should have got Reed back then and got. No, you know I would have. Really like, like, I'm be honest. Like that would have been my ultimate boom. You know what I'm saying? At the time when I was mm -hmm. doing my wham wham with both, mm -hmm. you know, I was like, cool, get both <laughs> of them, get, <laughs> get both of them, boom, and I'm good. Chris, right. All you had to do was take the condom off. Uh, who you said it was I did, I did, do you think Chris I Brown never, was using a condom with come them? On, come you, on now. Are you crazy? Go raw and something. Go raw and re -re. I, do, <laughs> I do my best to not to not cheat and not, mm -hmm. you know, be uh, crazy all over the place. I always have females around me, though. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I never... That, mm -hmm. that helps me write better songs. That helps me be more creative and understand the perspective of what these certain women want. But they know Karuche's position. They, she, ha she makes it clear. Mm -hmm. She walks... <laughs> But you said y'all was having threesomes together, so that helps. You know, that's that was early then. <laughs> <laughs> Many have criticized, but also ignored his dismissive attitude towards her experience. And but he just said that whatever she agreed to in the beginning, that's what that, that was in the beginning. I don't think that that don't sound forced. But he made it clear that eventually she said she didn't want to do that anymore. So, I mean, I don't know. Feelings. Karuchi Tran was granted a five-year restraining order after alleging threats and past physical abuse. Tran claimed that Brown had beat her several times and made violent threats against her life, which eventually led her to seek legal protection. During the court proceedings, she testified about violent text messages he sent, including threats like, I can get my money back and I'm tired of playing games. Bitch, I'll beat the shit out of you. Tran also reported that he threatened to kill her and would text, I'll make your life hell if she did not comply with his demands. She alleged that Brown physically assaulted her multiple times during their relationship, not only punching her in the stomach, but also was reported that he pushed her down the stairs. Karushi was beaten by Chris so badly in fact that her neighbor singer k cola has claimed that she heard chris brown hitting karushi and was so worried she even called the police the singer's tweets came nah, just hours man. after it was revealed karushi was granted a temporary domestic violence restraining order against chris brown after he allegedly threatened the killer k wrote some of y'all make me sick to my stomach talking about karushi lying i've heard him beating her myself i even called the police i used to cry over that situation situation hearing her screaming at the top of her lungs because i am also a victim of domestic violence chris fans however then turned their attention to k tweeting back 
and defending him. She responded, some of y'all are sick, delusional, defending this man is sick. He will never get the help or change because of yes men and weirdos like y'all. Women literally get murdered by men who act like this and y'all think it's cute or she just wants attention. Y'all wonder why celebs get away with so much because of weirdos like you putting them on a pedestal, letting them get away with this crap. If you're really a Chris Brown fan, you would want him to get help, not make excuses for everything he does. That's real love. The Grammy nominated singer who has worked with Eminem and Dr. Dre says she did not feel comfortable speaking up until now. She then told a hip hop blog that began to question her with the response, she left him. It wasn't my place to speak on her issues. However, now that she's speaking on it, I can't sit by and watch people say she's lying. So I'm guessing the blogger said she was a liar. You know, that's that's crazy, bro. I, I can't believe some of y'all, some of y'all are just gonna say someone's lying when they're when they're literally going through court to get a restraining order. Not to mention that Karushi did not pull a Cassie. She did not seek any money from Chris Brown. She did not ask for a dollar. Now, I heard that he did give her some money because he was whining and dining her and trying to woo her back, but she did not seek or take legal action to receive a penny. She just wanted I just gotta stop this for a second because this man background videos it's graphic i hope youtube don't get at me about this it's to separate herself from chris to call that a liar that's that's crazy Karuchi and Chris Brown's relationship began around 2011, and they officially split in late 2014 after Tran discovered that Chris had fathered a child with another woman. Following their breakup, Chris engaged in behavior that many perceived as stalking in real life and through social media. Karuchi Tran has shared several instances of stalking and harassment by Chris Brown, particularly after their breakup. One notable incident involved Brown allegedly following her outside he do a nightclub. Like he Following which her, exemplified his controlling behavior during their toxic relationship and contributed to Karuchi's feelings of fear and anxiety regarding her safety. He left derogatory Damn. comments on posts Damn. featuring Karuchi and her new then boyfriend, Victor Cruz, suggesting that Cruz needed a style upgrade. Chris Brown posted a video on social media in early 2021 where he referred to himself as a stalker. In the video, he made comments about being one of those men who women complain about, saying, Hey, did y'all be complaining about niggas being like stalkers and love with y'all kind of crazy shit and get tired of them? Well, guess what? I'm one of them niggas. If I love you, bitch, ain't nobody gonna have you. I'm gonna make you miserable. I'm gonna chase that nigga out. I'm gonna chase your ass around. And it's done. This bizarre admission caught the attention of many. The video was seen as troubling given Brown's history of abusive behavior. This alarming public admission caught the attention of many. However, no one seemed to care. Chris Brown and Quavo have recently reignited their feud, which has historical roots linked to Karuchi Tran, Chris Brown's ex-girlfriend. The conflict has resurfaced through diss tracks and pointed lyrics referencing their past relationships with Karuchi. The rivalry between Chris Brown and Quavo reportedly began in 2017 when rumors about Quavo and Karuchi started circulating. This tension intensified over the years. In April 2024 of this year, Chris Brown released a track titled Freak from the deluxe version of his album 1111 where he took shots at Quavo. Y'all know I gotta mute this. I ain't even gonna try to get no copyrights. At all. <laughs> Shortly after, Quavo responded with a song called Tinder, directly addressing the situation with lines like <laughs> And then Chris responded again with his track Weak Link. Get it? Weak Link. It has Quavo on the front of the cover, taking down a glizzy. Wild times. <laughs> Now, not only did Quavo respond back for the second time with the track called OHB, which stands for Over Hoes and Bitches, a parody of Chris's friend group or crew name, OHB, which actually stands for Original Hood Bosses, but he used the cover art of Chris allegedly choking a woman out on some diabolical shit. This was a cringe ass beef. I ain't gonna hold it.
I tell you, you try to be up to your honor, but Usher wouldn't let you do it, bro. What the? Come on, bro. This beef, that beef weird as hell. If they had that beef for real, I wasn't keeping up with that type of stuff. But damn. It was, it was kind of cringe. It was, it was like second yeah. embarrassment a little bit. I do need to point out that, mind you, it's been 10 years since Karushi and Chris broke up. And he's still making Damn. songs and making videos of her today. Which obviously, on, because of the restraining order, no contact whatsoever with her for at least five years out of those 10 years. It does give stalker vibes. I'm, I can't hold. So a yeah, little bit. Chris Brown found out Quavo was smashing Karushi a long time ago. Everyone knows they've been going at it for years over the situation. They never really, they never really squashed that beef. I mean, there was even a photo of them recently sitting next to each other and it looked so awkward it looks so uncomfortable honestly but they did sit next to each other and nothing happened i mean when it's all said and done people gotta like take accountability and people also gotta stop being so damn in denial y'all can't stand on business with one person and not stand on business with the other there's obviously issues in this situation you can't feel some type of way about diddy and not look in question Chris Brown. That does not take away mm. from their artistry. That does not take away. That does not take away their legacy. At the end of the day, Diddy did a lot of great things in his career. You would be stupid to say he hasn't. He is literally one of the pillars of hip hop. Whether he stole his way up there or sh did shiesty shit, he's done a lot of great things business wise was a co-producer of a lot of great hits. He had the ear for talent. Chris Brown is arguably one of the best R&B singer acts we've ever had. Very close to Michael Jackson, a man of all trades. Whether it's music, drawing, tagging, dancing, hell, even playing basketball. He's a jack of all trades. You guys gotta learn to separate that. Y'all gotta learn to stop looking at it on a surface level because a lot of these testimonies are just as dark and literally mirroring what victims are stating about Diddy. But you know, who am I to judge? All I know is that Chris Brown does go to the Diddy parties. He's been at plenty of them. He actually hangs out with Justin and Christian. They're not coming out with this documentary for no reason, just around the corner, October 27th. There, there's gotta be a reason why they're coming out with this documentary, especially because they are about to release the names on the Diddy list. However, I gotta say this, I gotta say this. It's mighty crazy and mighty funny how this Diddy list is coming very, very fast and we still have yet to see the actual epstein list Ain't message yeah because they trying to take the heat even though i don't know maybe did it did do what he did but i really feel like they t they using him to take the fall so they can continue to cover up what epstein did which he really learned it from them that's some bullshit but look, that's the end of that video right there. Y'all want to see the whole video, man. I will link it in the description, man. Uh, but let me just say this, bro. We we tend to forget that these artists are human, right? So because of them being so talented and, and great at what they do, that we tend to just sweep it all under the rug. But we can't we can't keep doing that because if we don't call them out on the things that they doing, they'll never get help. Just like he said in this video, bro. Like if you love if you love these artists, then you got to call them out on it. And you got to say, hey, bro, I think you need some help, bro. Uh, yeah, because this, this could lead to something really, really bad. But we don't do that. We just keep saying, oh, y'all just hating this, that, and the third. And the, and the most times it, it ain't hate. Is we see something different than y'all. You know what I'm saying? And as far as these women, well, I was always raised to believe that uh everybody ain't lying. Everybody is not lying, bro. I just hope that he didn't do any of this stuff, man. And if he did, bro need help, man. And that comes from somebody who listens to his music and who has followed his career for a long time, bro. You know, I mean, I ain't that much older than him. He's like, he's 35. I'm like, I'm 37. So I'm like three years older than him. But yeah, I, 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 I've, I've been watching him since he first came in the game. And to see him go through the things he went through, you know, it kind of made me feel bad for him. And I grew closer to him, to him and his music and what he was talking about. But damn, he must have paid people off to shut him up because, bro, I ain't heard about all his other allegations. 
I haven't heard about them. Only one I knew about was the Rihanna one because it was so high profile. That's that's the only one I knew about. But hey, y'all let me know what y'all think. Y'all get in the comments, bro. And uh, that's all I got to say on this. It's your boy Bo, and I'm signing out telling you to stay up, stay down, but most importantly, dog, stay real.